<laughs> Welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show. We give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is Mark Ellis. Way to nail that dismount, <laughs> Ashley. My name is Mark, and this is Collider Movie Talk. If you couldn't tell from how emotional Ashley sounded, it looked like you were weeping to kick off the show. Like, you're so sad know, that this so is sad. the second to last day that we're actually going to be uh, here in our studios doing it before we actually go down to comic-con but that is what's happening this weekend we're very excited to bring you guys some cool stories today and then also talk about the weekend that's going to be in san diego who's joining us today uh, also here is john schnapp yeah you know i realize i can't bling, bling. oh wait the car is still here bling. <laughs> It doesn't work that way. <laughs> also, here's Christian Harlow. Well, I'm not letting you off the hook. This is, this is what happened. She, she goes, she goes how, how are you getting? Are you leaving your car here? I'm like, no. Well, how are you getting there? Driving. It's like, well, where's your car? It'll be here. I thought, <laughs> no, wait, what do you mean they'll be here? You're driving there, so your car is going with you. Yes. I thought you were taking the train. That's what I mean. Oh, well, there we Some go. Some people are taking the train down. Some people are driving. Either way, somehow we're all going to be stumbling down to Comic-Con. We will be on site by Thursday morning, which is convenient because our huge meet and greet has now been extended to Thursday evening, 5 to 9 p.m. at the Bayfront Fox Sports Grill. So when you guys go over there, it's literally right across the street from Hall H. You don't have to cross that massive street. You just got to go from Hall H at the convention center right. a little ways over to the Fox Sports Grill. That's where you can come hang out with the entire Collider crew. And maybe Ashley will say something else that's poignant, heartfelt, and might be a little dirty too. So without further <laughs> okay. ado, Ashley, what's our first story today? According to a report from The Wrap, plans are already in motion for a sequel to Paul Feig's female-led reboot to Ghostbusters starring Melissa McCarthy, Leslie Jones, Kristen Wiig, and Kate McKinnon. Speaking to the outlet, president of worldwide distribution for Sony, Rory Brewer, had this to say, The Ghostbusters world is alive and well. I expect Ghostbusters to become an important brand and franchise. While nothing has been officially announced yet, there's no doubt in my mind it will happen. The report does not elaborate on whether or not Feig and all four leading ladies will return to the series, but sources say they are all expected to return. Ghostbusters came in second place during its first weekend in theaters, grossing an estimated $46 million from 3,963 screens. The film is on track to unseat the 1984 Ghostbusters as the highest grossing horror comedy of all time. The movie received generally favorable reviews with a current Rotten Tomato score of 73% with a B plus cinema score. Mark, thoughts on Sony's statement about a Ghostbusters sequel happening? Well, it's uh, something that you, I guess you can expect because the movie did okay opening weekend, but I was expecting bigger things from Ghostbusters than what it did end up pulling in from Friday to Sunday, but you want them to stand behind their product, and it does seem like they're excited about the franchise going forward. I liked watching Ghostbusters. I enjoyed the new one. It definitely had its flaws, but I think there's enough fertile ground there to grow a franchise where you could have sequels that are better than the original film. I don't know that this is an official green light right now, Schnapp. This is just a Sony executive standing behind their brand, justifiably so, because it still has a lot of money that could be made in theaters. So you want them to have a positive spin on it. Do you think we're going to see more Ghostbusters movies? I think so. I think there's nothing wrong with like, I mean, it wasn't a flop. It didn't fail at the box office. It didn't It didn't light up the box office. Um, but I think there's nothing wrong with it, announcing a sequel. They've done that with tons of other movies and then the sequel doesn't happen. But at least the intentions are there to make another movie. And uh, yeah, I mean, we all reviewed Ghostbusters, you know, don't want to have to go back into that. All I can say is leave Leslie Jones alone. She's funny. Stop picking on her, you know. <laughs> Don't be jerks. <laughs> Christian, do you think we're going to see a sequel? And should we see a sequel? We might see one. I'm, I'm going to disagree with you guys. I think it is a colossal error to make a, a sequel. Colossal? Uh, I, I do not think it was. I, I think it was pretty much close to a flop. $44 million on on the budget that they made it on and the fact that... The name Ghostbusters. Yeah, you the, would think it would do it's better. It's the name of the Ghostbusters. only made $44 million. We haven't seen what it's done internationally yet. Um, it, it. We're not talking about the marketing as much. How, the, I think the movie cost like $160 million to make. $144 million. Hundred forty-four million to make it made forty-four, and that's not including marketing. Um, and it's coming off the Ghostbusters name. I think that they want to do it because they're proud of it, and that's mm -hmm. good. You're not taking away anything from people working hard in a movie, and if they if they're if they're happy with their franchise, and that's what they want to do, and they're talking, they're going to make other ones. I just don't think anybody's going to want a sequel. I think that even though the, the critics review it's. 
this was a very different type of review all the way around. I think yeah. people were very were, were walking on eggshells with certain things that they were saying. People were being some people were being truthful, some people weren't. Some people were worried about what they were saying about this movie. Um, but I agree with you. First of all, leave Leslie Jones alone. The woman is a working actress and was doing and, and she was doing a movie. It's one of the funniest Ghostbusters it, in she the was, movie. She was. So and like, I, she was really you know, good. And yeah. it's like you know get your. I, I'm just gonna. I'll take it easy, but leave the woman alone. Yeah. She is just trying to work like anyone else, and she's doing her thing no matter what. Even if people in the last Airbender didn't get this kind of hate, and they were yeah. in a movie that was horrendous. Um, so you should never go after actors at all. Anybody who's making movies, they're making movies, they're making entertainment. But well, I think I just sometimes don't, you can go after them. But I think but in this like particular this. case, so the, the, this the, isn't the, going after. This is bullying. This is yeah. bullying. Leslie bullying. Jones is hysterical, and I thought she was really good. At Ghostbusters. I enjoyed all four Ghostbusters. I think the dividing line for a lot of people with this movie was how they felt about Kate McKinnon's performance. I know some people loved it. Some people could not stand it. Right. I was on the side of the ledger that enjoyed it. That's probably why I would be into seeing another Ghostbusters movie or maybe even a franchise. But Christian brings up a good point: is that regardless of how the the initial number of 40 or 50 million dollars hits you this is ghostbusters and this is not ghostbusters that came out in 1984 now movies have a different level they need to hit in order to become franchises and i'm not sure that it did that or is going to do that at least in the united states do we see any international impact having uh, a positive effect on getting a new Ghostbusters movie. Uh, maybe, but it also depends on what what's coming out internationally on the same time, too, because it's going to have a very, very tough second week with Star Trek coming out next yeah. week. You're looking at for $44 million for the opening weekend. 30, I, 20. 30. I, I mean, that's that, that would be success. I think that if they, I think you're close to a 20. I think if they get 20 million, that's they're probably going to land in like the four or five spot because they still have pets that's out there. I mean, Tarzan won't go away. Right. Um, so you got two other movies that we're going to be talking about in our coming out, soon yeah. segment that are also going to give that a good run for its money. So it's a very say, crowded weekend. If, uh, if they rotoscoped Kate McKinnon so she's just like a cartoon character in sure the second movie, then I would agree. Yeah, because yeah, she doesn't right. fit in the first yeah. movie. So just make her cartoon agree to disagree hold on let me, let me do i'll do i'm just standing here is that your uh rat face? she's just standing there and it's doing that face nice we have hey, both what about rats here because our next story involves mice what is it according to thr david peterson's 10-year running eyes are winning comic book series mouse guard is set for a film adaptation with dawn of the planet of the apes director matt reeves and rogue one a star wars story screenwriter gary witta 20th century fox has optioned peterson's best-selling work for an adaptation penned by witta with reeves producing alongside boom studios ross ritchie and Stephen Christie. Reeves is only set in a producing capacity at this time. Mouse Guard is set in a world of sentient mice who live in a medieval era that parallels the same age in human history, though in their world there are no humans. The story revolves around a brotherhood of mice known as the Mouse Guard who have sworn on an oath to serve their fellow civilian mice in time of need, including making safe passage for them through the wilderness and protecting them from predators. Fox plans to use the technology pioneered for apes and used earlier this year in the Jungle Book for a live action CG hybrid film. No release date has been set. Christian, thoughts on a Mouse Guard adaptation at Fox? I knew nothing about it, but I think it sounds awesome. It sounds like a lot of fun, and the fact that they're going to use the technology from Apes, sign me up. And for Jungle Book, the things, it, it looked great in yeah. Jungle Book. It looked great in Apes. So this sounds like a lot of fun. I want to see what, and we know that Fox has experience with the, the Apes franchise. So yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't know enough about it, but it sounds pretty cool. Could be um, something very interesting and unexpected. So mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah and, and you look at the talent involved, particularly when it comes to Matt, for Matt Reeves, who was so yeah. instrumental in, in Apes and, and where that's going forward. I like this idea too. I mean, the, the Rogue One Star Wars screenwriter, uh, Gary Wood, yeah, he, he's got a lot of talent. You'd never know how much play these guys have, especially when you're adapting a comic book series. But I do like how this sounds on its ear. How about you, Schnepp? I love it. Actually, I've been buying this. I bought it 10 years ago. So I have all the original comics for Mouse Guard. Keep them, man. Hopefully they go money. up and raise the value. But I'm not going to sell them anyway. But eBay. they are so much fun. Like 10 years ago, I just like out of the blue. I'm normally not like a, you know, a funny animals comic guy. But I was like, it's so well drawn. Like, look at that art. I mean, the artwork in it, like the swords are real. Everything, everything about the 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 comic book is very tactile. It's really well written, and it it was even when you're when you're reading it as a comic, you're like, wow, this should be animated. Almost, you feel like it's it's 
you know, dying to be uh, come to life. So to hear that they're going to use the Jungle Book technology to bring this to life is fantastic. I cannot wait to see it. Is it? What's the tone of the comic? Is it? it does it incorporate humor? Or do they take these mice taking this stuff seriously? It's pretty serious. Yeah, I mean there is humor in it, but it's born out of the story. It's not like there nobody's cracking jokes. It's a it's a serious story. Ashley, you have to deal with the S rats like I do every Tuesday. Uh, there also is still a mouse on the loose somewhere in the studio. It's oh, actually sure. really cute and tiny. Little tiny until, tiny there's, little until there's eight of them. And until there's eight of them, yeah. Do you like this news story? Do you think this could um, work? It's as a honestly, film? it's really hard for me to picture this right now. Are these are these mice going to be huge? No, are they going to be huge and just mice. like walk around like they have the little tiny swords, like toothpicks yeah. and stuff? Are you guys going to demand that you get a portion of this? Do you feel that you guys inspired this? <laughs> trying movie? to steal our gimmick. Yeah. Trying to steal your idea. Really taking a thing. What a... <laughs> okay. There we go. Oh, there it is. There it is. He got have one last one. Yep. Before Comic Con, if you guys go to our meet and greet on uh, Thursday, make sure ask them to do the face ad nauseum because maybe it gets them sick yeah, of it. And get and there early. A lot of us have to crack off at like seven, seven thirty. So if you want to hang out with some, get, get there at five. Just telling you. A lot I don't of know us what crack off means, but it sounds like fun. And yeah. I'll participate. Bust off, be out of there, <laughs> do another thing. It's going to be a good time on Thursday. Uh, let's move on to buy or sell. This is a part of the show where Ashley's going to present us with a topic, and we simply say whether we buy it or whether we sell it, then we'll defend our choice to the death. Ashley, do not bring up my hair because it seems like most people are selling it. I have no idea why. Well, I will try to not do that, I got, I got a cut in Fort Lauderdale this weekend. Oh, like, there I got you a go. cut right it before the show. Great. I thought you were and great in the house party. Here's the th I think it's that rare instance when I think my hair looks better in person yeah. than it does no, on it looks camera. Great. Though I think it looks fine on camera. It looks too. great. No. It looks great. I don't. I don't need you it's guys fantastic. patronizing oh. me. Okay? Yeah, I see what's happening beautiful. in the chat room right now, and I'm writing oh down. You just. Gosh. You just opened up so many. Yeah, you play did. You're, you're asking oh, for no. it. You're asking House, for House party. It. House party <laughs> memes. Yeah. Can you do that weird dance? Like, if I could be, I, I wanted Class to do it when I was a kid. Be Chris Kid Reed. So that's he, he actually does stand up. I know. Yeah, for a very long time. Just get the top a little higher. That's you know. Okay. I think I need some other adjustments before I become Chris, but. We'll see. We'll work on that. What's first in buyer's show? Fresh off the <laughs> announcement of Star Trek IV with Chris Hemsworth returning, Paramount has released its final trailer for Star Trek Beyond before its planned release in theaters this week. In the latest film, the Enterprise is a few years into its five-year mission when a mysterious force attacks and the crew must survive on an unknown planet filled with its own conflict. The film screened for critics a couple weeks ago with the buzz universally strong. Star Trek Beyond is directed by Justin Lin with a script by Simon Pegg. The film stars the returning crew of Chris Pine, Simon Pegg, Zachary Quinto, Zoe Saldana, John Cho, Anton Yelchin, and Carl Urban, alongside newcomers Idris Elba and Sofia Boutella. It opens this Friday in theaters. Schnett Byer saw the final trailer for Star Trek Beyond. I buy it big style. I can't wait to see this film. These clowns already did. I am a big Star Trek fan. This looks like a lot of fun. It feels like a, an episode just with a bigger budget. So... I cannot wait to see this film. Uh, this clown did not see the movie yet, huh? even though the Schmoes No official review is up right now. That would be Christian and Miri subbing in for me because, like I said, I was in Fort Lauderdale right getting this haircut. Uh, I do like this movie, though, as far as what I'm seeing from the trailers. And this trailer, this last one, is no different. I'm glad they didn't give away too much extra stuff. We just got to see a little more. I like the the juxtaposition of McCoy warning Kirk about he's kind of the worry ward. Then Kirk, at the end of the trailer, it's like, nah, we're just going to go in and do this. And it sounds like I'm going to have a blast watching this movie. Christian, is this trailer a good indication of how the actual film is? That's funny you say that because that's what I was going to say. I buy this trailer. I've seen the movie and it is a perfect representation of this film. It is the perfect representation. Um, it is... With, I'm not going to spoil anything for sure, but I, I'm not... You guys know, I'm not like a huge old school Star Trek fan. And the reason I liked this movie... Uh, the, uh, not the most. I think that's still like the first one, the best out of the reboots. But the reason I like this movie so much is because it was the most true to Star Trek. I thought uh, out of the three reboots, and it just it, it was a bit, it was a small movie in a big movie's body, right? And I, Sophia Boutella, who's in the trailer, is amazing in the movie. Carl Urban is a standout in the film, and you got that in the trailer. You really get everything, and you see a little Kirk impression. Uh, excuse me, the I did like the, that. the William yeah. Shatner impression in the first line. By go back and watch okay. it. The first line is, uh, I don't know what he says. Like, can you do it? Uh, he, he, no. gives, he gives a little uh, Honestly, Shatner, but it's a great it's also representation. Just the humor that they like, yeah. they get through in this trailer. I'm glad to see that they they brought that kind of humor back. Yeah. So. 
All right, what's up next in Buy or Sell? The latest trailer for Tate Taylor's upcoming thriller, The Girl on the Train, has been released, giving us another good look at the director's follow-up to the James Brown biopic, Get On Up. The film stars Emily Blunt as Rachel, who is devastated by her recent divorce and spends her daily commute fantasizing about the seemingly perfect couple who live in a house that her train passes every day. One morning, she sees something shocking happen there and becomes entangled in the mystery that unfolds soon after. The film also stars Rebecca Ferguson, Justin Thoreau, Luke Evans, Haley Bennett, Edgar Ramirez, and Lisa Kudrow. The Girl on the Train opens in theaters on October 7th. Mark Byers held the new trailer for The Girl on the Train. It was a big buy for me for about a minute and a half, and then I pulled what is going to be known as a schnep, and I was like, I don't want to watch this trailer anymore. I know you did the exact same thing, not because the trailer wasn't well put together, not because I'm not super excited about the movie. I just felt like I was getting too much of the story, and with a mystery film like this, I don't want to know too much walking into it. Having said all that, this movie looks fantastic. If you guys want to watch it, go ahead and have at it. Just note a caution. I thought it was starting to give away a little too much. Christian and Ashley were talking about how they think maybe the twist was given away or if there is just one twist in this movie. You guys have not read the book. So, Christian, do you think the trailer gave away too much, and is that why you would sell it? Um, no, I'm not going to sell it. I'm still going to buy it. It's funny because I was... I was watching, and I think, what the hell trailer we were watching where the Kanye song came on? I think, and it was Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed. No, man. yesterday, yesterday. Another one. There was another one where they put another Four song trailers. in it. We mentioned Assassin's Creed. I forget what the hell it was, but whatever it was, it, it didn't work. The contemporary song, but this, uh, as it came on, I was like, ah, I don't know if this is working. And then, f from what the lyrics are in the song, I actually did think it worked for the trailer. But it's a long trailer, so I, I'm like, okay. Ashley and I turned to each other and said, oh, this is what I think's gonna happen, and it really looks like it from how many clues they're giving you. Way too many clues. And I hope, look, this is what, this is, could be a, um, what's the uh, this, well, the Mars movie that we just did? Not Mission to Mars. The, I'm, I'm out of it. The Matt Damon movie. Mission to Mars. Not Mission to Mars. <laughs> not do that. It's called The Mars. Martian. Thank you. The Martian. Martian. I, my head's all messed up. What's uh, the movie where the guy <laughs> Hey, the, the Mars is, thing. Is it John Carter got somebody, goes to Mars? Somebody's on Mars. Somebody's on Mars. Whatever. My haircut looks good. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> nice thing to get there, buddy. <laughs> but I, um, all I'm saying, all I'm saying now, you know, screw this. Snap, what do you think about it? <laughs> all right. <laughs> You know, this trailer is its an explain-o-thon. I don't want to see a trailer that tells me. It's not like this is a Netflix 13-episode thing where they're like, check out this trailer. There's 13 more hours. It's only a two-hour movie, and they literally give you all of the beats. And it's not girl on a train. She's related to the dude, and there's all this. You just find out all this information, and that's in the first, like, 30 seconds. So I did exactly what Mark said. I turned it off. You especially, seem angered by this. I Are was. you selling the trailer because I of sell it? the trailer 100% because, they like, you know, look, trailers... Since they started trailers, they'd show you a lot of the movie. Nowadays, they show you the entire film, like you're some kind of idiot. Like, oh, d here, see, see this movie. It's extended when you see it into two hours. Please come see it, our film. We just showed you the whole thing. This 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 trailer gives you away everything, maybe except for the last ten minutes. I they think set that it I up have for you. fallen into a realm of just acceptance with trailers sometimes, where I don't get angry like I used to because I was really upset at The Martian, mm -hmm. and I was really upset at Southpaw, or as Christian calls it, the boxing movie, because <laughs> they gave away way <laughs> too much. It. They gave away all, all the beats in Southpaw, and it wasn't necessary to sell us on that movie. Same way where even though The Martian didn't give away as much of the story as we all thought it did, right. it still gave us away way too much. I'm stuck so on now, Mars. I simply. I take a breath and I very calmly hit stop yep. about a minute and a half in and I'm not going to watch any more yeah. of the Girl on the Train stuff. I still like the trailer. I'm, st I, I, I'm going to well see the movie. Trailer. I'm going to see yeah. the movie. They don't have to ruin the whole thing with the third trailer. That seems like the also the studio is like we give them a little teaser then the next movie we show a little bit more from the teaser and then the third movie you ruin everything. You right. show everything. So don't watch the third trailers anymore from any movie. I'm buying the trailer but I'm also buying the fact that I hit stop at 90 seconds. Uh, I <laughs> sell the trailer. I'm glad I hit stop what's, but I'm still seeing the movie. What's this show called again? explain o oh. Movie Talk and now we move ha -ha, on to talking ha -ha, ha -ha. about still pictures. What are those images Ashley? Universal has released a ton of new images from Jason Bourne, the movie that reunites Matt Damon and director Paul Greengrass in their most popular franchise to date. It's been 10 
years since Jason Bourne walked away from the agency that trained him to become a deadly weapon, and now he finds himself back in acting, battling a sinister network that un- utilizes terror and technology to maintain unchecked power. The film also stars Juliet Stiles, Alicia Vikander, Vincent Cassell, Tommy Lee Jones, and Riz Ahmed. Jason Bourne opens in theaters on July 29th. Christian Barr sell the new images from Jason Bourne. I buy them because it looks exactly like everything that I've seen from the trailers <laughs> sure. that I want that I've been buying. But I'm I just want to see this movie already. I don't want to see anything else. I hope no more trailers come out. The last trailer that came out, I got nervous that one of the scenes is directly from the end, and I don't want to be spoiled anymore. You don't need to show any more from Bourne. But everything that I see seems consistent, so I buy it. And I'm happy seeing still images, sure. be, especially yeah. still images that don't give away anything. So I will buy these big time. You get to see who's probably going to end up being the three stars. I don't know how Julia Stiles is going to factor into it, but it's great seeing Bourne in action. It's awesome seeing Alicia Vikander and Time Lee Jones, both people on the hunt for this guy who now remembers who he is. So it's an easy buy for me. I'm not going to get super excited because I already am super excited. And as I just found out this morning, you and I are going to go check this thing out on Monday yeah. next week. Yeah. So as soon as we're back from Comic-Con, we're seeing Jason Bourne, one of my most anticipated movies of the entire summer season. Mm. How about you? I buy these pictures. I like the behind the scenes pictures too. Seeing the crew, seeing like just people in t-shirts and just like that gives you an, like an idea as to like, you know, oh, the excitement, at least for me to see that green grass is back. I also love seeing some of these set pictures where just the, the lighting, where everything's like, oh, they're in their weird control room. Everything's blue. So, it's always blue in the yeah, control it's blue. room. I, that's what I would be if I was some kind of mad, you know, like, hey, I've got 100 computers. Make sure you got the cool blue lights, you know, mm-hmm. makes it look bad ass. So Do you think that's the tech guys just complaining about the too much light? No, I think it's like the, the commercial director aspect of the cinematography, like make sure it's got a golden blue hue on everything with an under light of yellow. You know, it's like it looks cool. Well, if you like colors, this next door is for you because it's only about 10 seconds of footage, but boy, <laughs> is it every color of the rainbow and then some. What is it, Ash? The first footage from Vin Diesel's Triple X Return of Xander Cage in the form of a teaser and now tra- teaser trailer announcement has been posted by Diesel on his Facebook page. After the failed Triple X State of the Union starring Ice Cube, Xander Cage marks the triumphant return of Diesel back to the role. Disturbia director DJ Caruso is behind the camera in a story which finds Xander coming out of a self-imposed exile to face off against a deadly alpha warrior named Ziang. Racing against Yang and his team to recover a seemingly unstoppable weapon known as Pandora's Box, Xander recruits an all-new group of extreme cohorts and finds himself in a vast conspiracy that suggests corruption in the world's most powerful governments. Triple X Return of Xander Cage is scheduled to hit theaters on January 20, 2017. Schnepp, buyers saw the first look at Triple X The Return of Xander Cage. Well, until I see like a few more people flipping around on motorcycles, I'm going to sell it just because... <laughs> I mean, I like Vin Diesel. I love him in a lot of the different films. I wish he would just keep doing the Chronicles of Riddick because that that's kind of fun to me. And at least he's a different character in that. Yeah. This he just feels like it's like Vin Diesel sleepwalking. He's got a cool, weird coat on. I mean, it's the same coat from the original Triple X. Now, I can't even remember what he says. Like, hey, it's good to be back or whatever. He says some line. It's still good to be back. Still, yeah, it's just I just, you know, I got to see more of the trailer. So this little micro tease, whatever, I sell it. I didn't like it. I'm going to sell it. I uh, I wanted to do this and be really excited for Triple X, but I never saw either one of the first two movies, and I don't really care about the franchise. It's neat to see Vin Diesel embracing being an action star. I just feel like this was just so self-important, and just look at how cool I am. Like, it never felt like I was watching a character. I just felt like I was watching Vin Diesel make some sort of awful music video. <laughs> yes, it's the code from the first one. Congratulations. It did nothing to sell me on this movie, and I know that it's just a preview for a trailer which is something we have to deal with today but maybe the trailer is going to change my tune when we actually get to see some more action stuff and what the story is but just watching Vin Diesel hang out and look cool like he's about to go kick some ass is no indication of whether this movie is going to kick some ass so I sell it I sell every teaser for a teaser that ever came out. I sell someone who's sitting around going, oh, I wish I could see a teaser for a teaser. I sell that person. Mm. I sell, I hate teasers for teasers. Show me a teaser. I don't need to see three seconds, like flip, 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 flip. Right. I'm home. Uh, I don't need, who cares? Teaser. Um, I will caution you to remember when what? we got pretty excited. Yeah, with the John Boyega when thing. When The with Force the... Awakens was coming out, they I... had multiple teasers for teasers for teasers, and we lost our minds. Now, it's a very special situation. We lost situation. our minds as you saw footage 
footage, but I still would have rather. I mean, to quote Fred Armisen when he did that sketch. So what? Who cares? It, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. I hate these little teaser dumb things. And it does. It feels like a Facebook Live video. Someone's just in the middle of, of his kitchen. Uh, uh, I'm home. <laughs> Great. You're home. Right. Uh, perfect. Is this a movie? What, no, what else? Nobody is there? cares yeah. about Triple X. I mean, it's 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 one of these things. It's it, oh, well, look. So when what? Who when cares? Triple X came out, it was a fun extreme sports action movie. It's like, can we take an? There was basically. Hollywood trying to package extreme sports and we're like, what can we do with people on bikes or people who are extreme skiers? Like, can we can we make some action film around that? And so that's what they did and they wrapped it around and that's what Triple X was. You have to have incredible footage of incredible extreme sports. And I didn't see that in this film. In this trailer, we just see a dude in a bike flipping. So yeah. that's what the teaser has. So the I, trailer has to have. We that. got a teaser for the teaser. <laughs> it's just so fun that we have to it's say this so stuff. Stupid. We yeah. got that when we got that for Jason Bourne. I was excited. Okay, there's certain times right. when I like those, and I think it falls into the category of movies that we never thought we would get to see again. And that was Matt Damon as Jason Bourne, right. and that was The Force Awakens. Triple X. That's a movie that I never cared about seeing again. So if you show this to me. Great. It makes a little bit of a ripple on the internet. Let's wait for the trailer. Uh, I sell it in the meantime. Ashley, you checked out this thing. Does seeing Vin Diesel in that coat looking like just one of those Vegas douches <laughs> at a club that just has bottle service and a bunch of girls around him and doesn't talk to anybody? Is that going to excite you about seeing this? Well, movie? I don't really know why you'd come to me for a movie named Triple X. I so think what? we all have. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> what? That's what she said. No, I hate teasers to teasers. I absolutely hate that. I hate teaser trailers in general. It's like, give me a trailer. Or Why do I need to see this? Poster, trailer, movie. Nothing in between. Thank Yay. you. Uh, it's a hot topic up here on the panel. Wendy, I want to check in with you over at the desk. You're monitoring the chat room. I know they have a lot to stuff. They have a lot of stuff to say about a lot of different topics. What was the, the chat room saying about <laughs> Ghostbusters and about Triple X and maybe some other things? Well, while I'm combing through the chat room, uh, trying to separate everything from the hair comments, I am catching some <laughs> Ghostbusters there's, there's some people. good hair comments in there? Uh, just a little, little bit. Just a few? Yeah. Just What's a the couple? best one? Can you read the best hair comment? I saw a good one. Uh, Mark Ellis's hair is not as great as Vin Diesel's hair. That's whose? Vin Diesel's. <laughs> Vin oh. Diesel. <laughs> Hey, wait, if I could pull off that look, I probably would, but yeah. I can't. <laughs> well, let's talk about Ghostbusters sequel happening. If I could hear the chat room, I could hear a collective groan from them. They're asking why they're making a sequel when it's not even making money, especially since the movie was censored from being shown in China. How do they make, expect the sequel to make any money? Inhumane Chart 67 says, remember that Fantastic Four had a sequel plan for this? So this probably means nothing. Um, and moving on to uh, by our cell section, Triple X Return of Xander Cage. So, real quick, the image with Vin Diesel with that fur coat looks like he wants to be in the next Macklemore video. Um, <laughs> yes. Seeing a lot of sales for Triple X saying that no one's asking for another one. Spider Zero says, by the way, who came up with Triple X as a movie title? This is not a porno. This is not a porno, idiots. <laughs> and Alagus C. Johnson says, I buy the trailer announcement along with the upcoming trailer. I'm glad Vin Diesel is returning to Triple X. I think the fans of the first movie want to forget State of the Union with Ice Cube. Mm. Spider Zero. <laughs> the return of Spider Zero. The interwebs. I think it just upsets me that Vin Diesel puts the coat on. We're all supposed to go crazy like we're right. watching He's Indiana Jones. He's wearing the original coat. He's yeah. got the fur coat thing. Nobody cares. But maybe the movie's good. We'll have to wait to find out. But there are some Nobody movies opening cares. this weekend that I hope are great. Ashley, what do we got on tap? We've got two. First up, Ice Age Collision Course. Scrat's epic pursuit of the elusive acorn catapults him <sighs> into the universe where he accidentally sets off a series of cosmic events that transform and threaten the Ice Age world. To save themselves, Sid, Manny, Diego, and the rest of the herd must leave their home and embark on a quest full of comedy and adventure, traveling to exotic new lands and encountering a host of colorful new characters. Also coming out is Lights Out. When Rebecca, Rebecca Teresa Palmer left home, she thought that her childhood fears were behind her. As a young girl growing up, she was never really sure of what was real when the lights went out at night. Now her little brother Martin, Gabriel Bateman, is experiencing the same unexplained and terrifying events that jeopardize her safety and sanity. Holding a mysterious attachment to her mother, Maria Bello, the supernatural entity has returned with a vengeance to torment the entire family. All right, well, the one I really want to talk about is Lights Out, but I will table that so we can get the Ice Age, uh, is it Collision Course? Yeah, uh, collision Out of the way. Course. Schnapp and I, you, you and I did a number of trailer reactions sure. for this thing. And we, we like the, the, uh, the Outer Space one. We like seeing yeah. the squirrel go 
for the acorn yeah. and it ends up being this huge catastrophic like, is, could that be the whole usual. movie yeah. um christian has actually seen the film what he did so oh, he no. can steer it because he's a huge fan of the franchise oh yeah. my goodness uh, gracious what did you think of ice age collision Corps? are schnepp and i are gonna enjoy this i thought that the last one was an abomination. Continental Drift. Hard. Continental Drift. It was so drift. hard to sit through those movies. There's five of these movies. Yeah. Oh five of them. Oh, my God. I took my daughter to see it. Going, Let's see how, how it is for one. this fifth one. It's not that bad. Wow. It's not that bad. You're saying I mean, that because you were with your daughter. And no, it was no, no. She said, well, that's definitely a litmus test to find out. Like, if she if she's getting bored, then the movie's right. definitely going to sink to high heaven. But she didn't. She was, in, she was into it. it and, yeah, there were some cool characters. Simon Pegg's character was really cool. Um... But I, I wound up getting some enjoyment out of it when I thought I was going to hate it. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm just going to have to stick through this one. But it's enjoyable. It's not for. It's not one of those brilliant animations. People are going to be running around going, oh, you know, this is the next. This is the next. Inside Out, or it's just an. It's it serves the franchise well. It's it's going to be good for kids. It's a good movie for uh, parents to take their kids to see. But I don't think it's going to have that kind of adult. There were people who go, oh, you know what? I enjoyed it as well. It's not one of those things. It's just right. a matter of it's a it's a good family film. Well, it's picked up the baton from Secret Life of Pets and running with it, so you could have another animation smash on your hands. But snap, there's a movie right. coming out for guys more of our cut, yes. where you have the Lights Out movie. It's a horror film. It came from this it's really horrific short on YouTube that was so well done. Now it's a feature film. You've seen it. Does it pull it off as well as that short did? It certainly does. Uh, David Sandberg is a, the guy who made that original short. James Wan uh, was like, look, man, I want you to make this into a feature film. And that's what they did. And I think it's a very successful horror film. It's a tiny film. It it works really well. Uh, the tension is there the entire time. Literally, the if you watch the trailer, it doesn't ruin the movie. You get the idea, though, when you turn the lights on, you can't see this weird creature. When the lights go off, she's like <laughs> a little bit closer. Do you turn the lights back on? Then you turn it off. So you know you might want to just have all the lights on forever, right, Wendy? Who saw it with me and couldn't and left the lights on when she saw it that later yeah, that day. Yeah, what do you think Wendy? about the movie, Wendy? I definitely went home and turned my lights on. I slept with them on that night. You no, know, it's really creepy, and I like that it was very tense throughout the whole movie. Great jump scares. I loved it. Yeah, uh, Diana. She's the, the horror that you, you, you got to keep the lights on for. I thought it was really well done. And, and for a small horror film, it kept that tension from the very beginning all the way to the credits. So I thoroughly enjoyed oh, it. Oh, good. I cannot wait to see Lights Out. It's from the same production company that does all the Conjuring movies. James Wan involved with that. David Sandberg directing it, who also did the short film. Ashley, if you and I are going to the movies and I give you the choice between mm -hmm. Ice Age 5 or Lights Out, which one are you taking and it's why? It's definitely going to be Lights Out. I remember seeing this short way back when. Like I don't even know how Three many years, years ago. It, it came years. out a while ago. Yeah. And if James Wan is backing up something, like you got to believe it's going to be good. And I'm so excited that you said it's good because like, now I'm even more pumped. Yeah, you'll scream. There's a couple, and there's like in the audience that we saw, we saw with a bunch of critics and stuff, that you couldn't help it. Like, don't do that. You heard I, I, what, people like talking, like, come on. I yelled <laughs> I out, come that. on, like once or twice. Like, no one would, don't go down there. Like, you can't help but yell at the screen. Oh, so it. it's one of those films, and it's really fun, too. But, I'm going to get a large corn and enjoy the hell enjoy. out of that movie. Uh, <laughs> that's just a couple of the movies that are coming out this weekend. A lot of good options right now. Go to amctheaters.com for all your box office and Showtime ticket information. And now we are going to move on to Mailbag. I do want to remind you guys, at the end of the show, we're going to save some time for your live Twitter questions. So go ahead and start tweeting us right now at Collider Video. And if you guys want to get an email read on the show, just email us anytime collider video at gmail.com keep them original keep them fresh and let's see what we got today Ninad Kondakar writes hey guys love everything you do and keeps my day fresh so I recently saw a brick from Ryan Johnson and I loved it I just saw it because I love Looper and can't wait to see what he brings to episode 8 so my question is that is there any director whose previous films you loved even more than the one that made him famous Ah, it's a it's a great question. It's a tough call because there's there's directorial efforts that were their rookie try that did very well mm -hmm. and did put them on the map. Then they went on to even bigger accomplishments. The one that stands out to me is that everybody knows Rob Reiner. They knew him from All in the Family way back when he played Meathead, and then he's known now as doing a lot of romantic comedy kind of movies. But the very first movie that Rob Reiner directed was This Is Spinal Tap, mm -hmm. and it's one of the funniest examinations of the 
heavy metal rock and roll lifestyle that you will ever see. Wayne's World took a big cue from Spinal yeah. Tap. A lot of spoof movies did. It's so funny. It is so well done, and it holds up. The comedy holds up to this very day, where you still watch it, and part of you is laughing, and part of you does want to crank that music up to 11, because Big Bottom, it's the, it holds up <laughs> yes. to this very it's day. It's a mockumentary, in but my opinion. they're a real band, too. Uh, so. Schneff, you are an actual director. What is a movie that somebody made in their first outing that you thought stands the test of time? Well, I was going to say Memento. That's mm -hmm. not Nolan's first movie. That's called The Following, his first mm -hmm. movie. But Memento is the one that sticks out to me that I just remember... A lot, some of my friends who love independent film were like, you got to see this film. Went and saw it. Blew my mind. I was like, wow, I can't wait to see what this guy does next. And obviously, a ton of all the Batman films, Inception, Interstellar, but Memento sticks out. And of course, I love Pimping Moon as many times as I can. Um, Duncan mm, Jones' good one. first film, Moon, which is a lot of people still haven't seen. I highly recommend checking out. He moved on to do uh, Source Code and then Warcraft, but Moon really sticks out for me. I would throw a Source Code in there, too, for Duncan Jones. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you got, Christian? Oh, I was going to go with Memento and and Insomnia for Nolan because obviously the Batman movies are the ones that made sure. him and Insomnia fantastic yeah. right those are the ones that made him famous but um, Layer Cake from Matthew Vaughn mm. is something that Ooh. would would stand out for sure and um, there's some and, and John Hillcoat's a proposition totally one. Yeah. love that film good movies guys that was a really nice fun conversation you? and now we have one more mailbag you don't want to answer I took a uh, Spinal Tap thanks oh, for right, 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 right. For listening. I thought I want something else I thought there was something else <laughs> you, were, you were reading comments no I wasn't you were reading comments no I wasn't I'm Actually. breaking up this fight. All right, Damon <laughs> Ward writes, Hey guys, my question is, what is the worst movie in your opinion that deserves an immediate remake? I prefer a movie that came out from 2000s and forward. My choice would be The Last Airbender. Oh man, there are some movies that do deserve that treatment. The Last Airbender would be at the top of most people's list. Uh, I'm gonna say, I, I didn't care about it when it was coming out, but I think you could in our modern day comic book movie heavy landscape, if you took the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen mm -hmm. and you put a good cast on it, you got a better story around there, maybe bring Sean Connery back for a cameo, I don't know. It was the last movie he ever did and he hated it so much he has not acted since. I think the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen could still work and maybe even better so in today's comic book movie age. Oh yeah. Well, I'd also say The Shadow would be one that mm. you could do. I would like to get into a DeLorean go into the future and say that they should remake McGee's Masters of the Universe. <laughs> um, so if we can do that, that's, I would That's not. illegal. It's a little, the movie has not come out yet. That's just a little yet. bit no. of pre-hatred from uh, Christian can't, there. can't do that. Um, <laughs> all right, so then I would also say... Uh, it, it, this is This is actually a good movie that I think should be remade, so it's really not... It's not answering the question at all. I apologize, but I think Legend would be mm. Ridley Scott's... To revisit it, reboot re it. A revisit yeah. more than anything else. But yeah, let's... Uh, and what has, about a, just a sequel to Legend? Darkness is too. back. Yeah. Darkness yeah. is back. You know, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to, Damon, I'm going to cheat and say one year earlier, 1999, I think a little movie called The Phantom Menace should be completely rebooted hmm. from <laughs> scratch, redone, rewritten. Oh, yeah. Just take the story that George Lucas wrote, just the plot, the story, have it rewritten, have it and then just remake those tr the entire trilogy. I think it would be fantastic. I got two more for you. I don't think that's going to happen, no. but thank you okay. for participating. Just two more. Um, we've talked about Transformers. Like People like the Michael Bay. Sure. I, sure. I would actually like to see someone else kind of tr use the treatment that they've used for Marvel and DC and Star Wars and use mm. that on Transformers. I think that would be really interesting. And someone mentioned here Dragon Ball Z. Which that's going to happen very soon. Yeah. G.I. Joe is another one. Since you brought up Transformers, I'd like to see them just reboot that entire franchise. They did two yeah. of them. Just start over. You know what? I don't know if I'm in the minority. I know I don't know how people feel about this film, but I love the 1960s animated version with your boy Bar uh, Boris Karloff doing the voice of the Grinch in oh, yeah. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I love it. I hated Ron Howard's movie. Yeah. I could. I loved Jim Carrey to death. Sure. I could not stand that movie. So maybe there's a way to do a better live action version of How the Grinch Stole Christmas someday down the road. We'll have to. Or wait just to watch the cartoon. Just watch the cartoon. Yeah, that's, that's the, the best, best way to do that's it. That's the best way to go around Christmas time or any time. It's Grinch time. All right, let's move on to Twitter questions. We got time for a few of these before we get out of here and on the road to Comic-Con. Ashley, what are they saying in Twitter? Mm. Only good news, please. Okay, A. Clay writes, is Bradley Cooper in trouble? His last three films all sank at the box office. Mm. Is Bradley Cooper in trouble? I do not think he is because Bradley Cooper is the caliber of actor that every time he's in front of a camera, he could be up for award consideration. So even though it didn't work out with the movie like Burnt, which I think was clearly geared to, oh, maybe I can get an Oscar for this. If you do it right, he's going to be back in award talk. And that doesn't always necessarily translate into box office dollars. But I think a guy like Bradley Cooper, let's not forget, he also has that little Guardians of the Galaxy movie right. coming out next summer where he's not on screen for it, but he's doing the voice of Rocket Rap. 
raccoon. He's going to be doing all that PR for it. It'll be on all the talk shows. So I think Bradley Cooper is going to be doing just fine. Plus, he is not hard to look at. Schnepp? Yeah, and now when he's uh, he's going to be the new uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark guy, right? Just kidding. I don't know. Yeah, it could hey, be. Chris, he's Rocket Raccoon. No, because the, the thing is, all of his the less the movies that weren't successes were not, uh, they were kind of quiet bombs, if you will, and he was not really the lead of all of them. You look at Aloha, which was, that's more of a Cameron Crowe bomb, if right, anything right, else. You're right. not going to blame that on him. Burnt, like you were saying, smaller film. That's uh, on him, but it's, it's, it's on a him, but it's a film smaller film. It's kind of, it, 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 not that people are paying attention to it. So, and they weren't trying to market it on this big blockbuster movie, mm -hmm. trying to start right. him. Uh, Joy nominated for an Oscar. American Sniper, by the way, was, 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 was the most profitable movie of that year. And massive film, and then so he's got other movies coming out. He's got the uh, he's got War Dogs, which he's not going to be the star in that movie. But there's a lot of other movies that he's got coming out. That there's something about him that I think he's going to be okay. He's because they're not leading with him for the for yeah. relying on him for box office. If we see him at Comic Con this weekend, let's give him five bucks. We'll yeah, I think the guy sure. can use it. Okay, gotcha, Brad. What's up next? Okay, Debbie Schechter writes: Will there be a spoiler review for Star Trek Beyond? Uh, will there be a spoiler review for Star Trek Beyond? It's a tough weekend for us because the movie comes out this weekend and right. we're going to be down at Comic-Con all week long and some of us haven't seen it yet. Uh, I think that the guys would be up for talking about it. I don't know that we'll do an official Collider spoiler review of Star Trek Beyond. Yeah, you got to remember, we're going to have so much material up from Comic-Con. There's going to be so much coming out. Right. So it's going to be hard for everybody too. Plus, you know, it's easy to say, yeah, we can do it when we get back. People are going to be exhausted when right. they get back. But we'll, we'll see. We'll try. We'll see what we can do for you. Keep you on the lookout. What's up next? Sam Carrico writes, where does the line between director and cinematographer end? Does a director tell a cinematographer how to frame a shot? It's a great question. I think it really depends on the relationship mm -hmm. between the particular director and the particular cinematographer. Sometimes you can have a director who knows every shot they want, how to compose it, and they basically give the work orders to the cinematographer. Other times, if you have a newer director or somebody that just has a great working relationship with a cinematographer they've known for decades, they say, how do you feel about this? Mm -hmm. And it becomes more of a collaborative effort. Is that how you would work at Schnepp? Yeah, I mean, also remember the cinematographer is also the the DP, the director of photography, the lighting guy. He's he's setting the tone and the mood of the entire the place. I mean, you, you usually like you set you do your location scouting, you set your location, you talk about it with the entire crew, and your your set your shot compositions are you know you create your shot list as a director and what you're going to try to do. But you're working with an entire team of people. It depends on your relationship, like you said with the with the cinematographer. A lot of uh, a lot of directors are just like you set up the shots. I'm going to work with the actors. Some directors work that way. Most directors have like compositions that how they want to do stuff. They they do their wides or their masters first, then they come in for the close ups. But uh, it really depends. Like I said, it's a it's a case by case scenario with certain directors like Ridley Scott will do his own very precise storyboards. Other directors will be very flowing and just like, look, man, let's let's just show up and see what happens and just change everything. Something could be loosely boarded. but They're like, screw it. Let's go outside and shoot it. It's not interior anymore. Let's do it outside. So it's kind of fun to have that run and gun aspect, too. And a lot of DPs thrive on that. You know, you have to you have to find the right fit with uh, the crew. But Christian, who do we give credit to? Who earned it? The cinematographer? the director I just it, it completely I agree with Schnepp and it's, it's, I don't even want to answer because the fact that you have like Jordan on the court hits it walks right. off I mean the, the, as you have like I, I think the director depending on who he is what his status is is it a younger director is a new director like what the relationship you look between like Nolan and Fister like they have like this kind of equality you, you look at uh, Deacons and uh, Villanueva have been working sure. together it just it just depends you, it, it's the first time working with somebody to, as opposed to like the fifth time and just like this it's almost like you don't have to have conversations it's a anymore. Invisible language. It's a rhythm. Yeah. So yeah, it just really depends. All right. Let's do one more Twitter question, then call it a day. Okay. Barry Allen writes, now that Stranger Things is on Netflix, finally, what are your favorite nostalgia movies and TV shows? Thank you, Barry, for bringing up Stranger Things. I finally got to uh, close it out yesterday, and I loved it. It's awesome. I'm going to try to do episodes? a review at some point. Eight. It's eight episodes. So it's very bingeable. It mm. will suck you I in heard, heard. so far yeah. that you do not want to stop. You will cancel the rest of your life <laughs> to finish watching Stranger Things. Yeah. It's got like an X Files vibe. I got to it's, episode three, but I was so tired last night. I, I was I would have watched all of it, but yeah. I'm just too tired. It's just it, it's got everything you love from a lot of classic '80s t uh, TV stuff. So I love the nostalgia in there, and I got so excited talking about Stranger Things. I forgot what the rest of the question was. 
What are your favorite nostalgia movies and TV shows? Uh, I always go back to one that never is at the tip of people's tongues. They want to throw the Goonies at you right off the bat, which I love. I never saw that until I was in college. The Sandlot is a movie to me. It just brings me back to my youth. Even though I didn't grow up in the 40s or 50s, whenever that movie takes place, I played baseball pretty much every day, virtually every summer, and I might have looked more like the catcher than anybody else on that field, and I'm proud of it. So the Sandlot's one for me. Uh, I mean, as far as TV shows go, Sopranos comedies you go to cheers you movies you know et uh indiana jones empire strikes back uh, you get nostalgic watching the sopranos what's yeah what kind of life you had bud listen i lived in the east coast that's all i'm going to talk about yeah. <laughs> so we're not going to talk anymore about the okay, east coast okay. i lived in the east coast hey, hey, you know, hey what happens in the east coast uh, stays sometimes. in the east coast ellis hey. just because you got a fancy oh. haircut Petey doesn't Peppers. mean you get to talk yeah. mad, crazy stuff well, about the East Coast. Right. This right. guy opens his I mouth. I can't believe <laughs> when yeah. it should be shut. I, you know what? I'm going to close his mouth with a giant uh, submarine sandwich. What do kind it. of you want to have a Put shoved into your mouth? Put the peppers on huh? there. Smack now, it around. Does your Italian character things. have anything that they he does. Just you know what? About? See, next time you go see my cousin Sal, great barber. Oh, he is a good barber. He would have <laughs> fixed you up straight, Alice. He wouldn't have given you this weird kind of kid and play <laughs> outfit. Looks good. You look hey, like good a, in person. Speaking of 80s. Can you do the tap the shoe thing? Can you tap the shoe? Can you He's supposed to be doing it. I, I don't hey, know it. what that means. Tim Curry, tap it. the shoe. Stranger, Stranger Things <laughs> reminds me of it, the television uh, horror series from Stephen King. And then why not watch a little All in the Family and Mark and Mindy while you're at it? Oh, that's a good one. I also like Christian's call of Cheers before yes, we went down that cheers. rabbit hole right back to <laughs> New York. All right, Tony that Ramiel. does it for this episode of Collider Movie Talk. Joy I want Peppers. to give a special thanks to everybody both behind the scenes and Joy up Peppers. here on the panel with me. Joining me to the left and the right today are two guys that are going to be driving down to Comic-Con together as soon as we turn the cameras off. They're going down on Tuesday. Schnepp, where can everybody find you at Comic-Con this weekend? Oh, well, I'm um, doing a lot of Film HQ shows. We're doing a lot of movie talk shows. I'm doing a signing with Slayer at the Dark Horse booth on That's Friday awesome. at 3 o'clock, so definitely come by and see that. Uh, we're doing our meet and greet Thursday night. I'm doing a big show announcement on Saturday morning in room 6A at 10 o'clock, so you want to see that. And uh, in general, just having fun, going to parties, hanging out with these guys. Uh, it's going to be fun, so I can't wait. Christian, I'll need your cousin Sal's information yeah. in about three weeks. It's not mine. It's and Tony Reveals. Where can everybody find you this weekend at Comic Con? Petey Peppers. Petey Peppers. Uh, you can find me, Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram. A lot of updates. And not only are we going to do tons of stuff, obviously, on Collider, we're going to have a lot of coverage on the Schmoes channel. Uh, a lot of Hall H stuff, a lot of TV stuff. Make sure if you're not already subscribed, do that. We did a Comic Con special with the dudes over at Superhero News. Mark did that. And that will be up, I believe, today sometime. So if you want to get a preview special, please go check out Schmoes. But a lot of stuff happening happening this week. Ashley Mova, where can everybody find you? You guys can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Ashley Mova. Happy Tuesday, guys. All right, and that will do it for me as well. Make sure you guys not only go to amctheaters.com for your box office showtime ticket information, uh, go to collider.com, bookmark that page. That's where we go for a lot of our movie scoops that we bring you guys each and every weekday. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not also throw it over to Wendy Lee one last time. Where can everybody find you this weekend at Comic-Con? you going to be down there? Yeah, I'm going to be at Comic-Con. So if you guys come to the meet and greet, I'll be there. And you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. Very good stuff. Subscribe right here at Collider Video. And don't forget to check out Jedi Council. There's a lot of cool updates that came out of Star Wars Celebration. Maybe not as many updates as we wanted, but right. you can catch Jedi Council. And that is actually up on the channel right now for yeah. this week. We did a live special yesterday. It was myself, Riley, and Campia, and we broke down all our thoughts on celebration and you can find that right now no episode on thursday because of the one we did yesterday very good stuff while you guys are on youtube make sure you guys subscribe to the schmoes no show and schnapp i want to make sure i get you in there too for uh, heroes collider heroes tomorrow check it out we got a little special like what are we gonna see at the con so check it out on heroes tomorrow i am merely mark ellis you guys can find me on twitter at mark ellis live see you guys at the meet and greet thursday night at the fox sports bar and grill Hey guys, life. if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.